Take, take the Fifth Amendment. Plead the Fifth. Yeah, yeah. plead the Fifth Amendment. I went early, yeah. a day early on an appearance once. <laughs> <laughs> well, they gave me the day. You're keen. They gave me the day. You know, remember the day. Like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. We are back, and for the first time, we have Johnny O. Um, a veteran of the cab trade Not as much as a veteran as our regular almost now Mr <laughs> Peter Maynard And uh, my co-host is David Frampton Who's always there to ask the questions That are important and cutting edge Oh I don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to know some, some, some knowledge But I, I believe he, you didn't go to a knowledge school is that I right? did I basically bought myself a, a very large map And uh, a big long ruler A piece of wood The I would measure it out Straight yeah. line and then I would actually write it down on my little uh, notepad, and I would—I d- I don't think I even had a board on the front of my bike. I, I, <laughs> I, I had a piece of string going from the two uh, wing mirrors going across. Did you? <laughs> from a piece of paper on a clothes <laughs> peg, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> flapping in the wind. Yeah, and basically, I've more or less known the run before I actually done it, where I'd obviously yeah. written it out, and it worked for me. I got through start to finish in fifteen months. So. Um, how many blue book runs were there? Was it four, six, eight? Something like that. It was, yeah. it was the old system where you did the first so many pages, then you went up that, yeah. and then obviously, then it was ongoing after that. Johnny O, I know the answer to this, but what school did you go to? <laughs> uh, uh, I think it was Wizard. I, no. I think I had a Wizard. We tried to oh, buy you, yeah, but yeah. you kept coming back. <laughs> he was at Watts Grove when I first, then you went to Glen the Street. Yeah. Right? Watts Grove were the greatest days. Yeah. Really. That was the, the best school we ever had. Did you like it there? I did, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I came to the beginner's course with you and sat there with like 15 people around the table. By the end of the meeting, you knew everyone's name. Oh, the memory so, trick. So, yeah. yeah, I, oh, I, I, I trick. witnessed that at Gillinder Street, actually. Did you? Yeah, I come in. How many I, people were in your one when I did it? It was about 40. Yeah. And you, every single person you called, called everyone up. John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember clearly. Just a case of, like you're doing the runs, build up. You're, you're basically doing what you say do four. Stop, yes. do four. So you was doing two, 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 similar. Yeah. It's one of the oldest memory tricks in the book yeah. is to compartmentalise and chunk pieces. So you're, I'm putting together a four. That's all I'm remembering is four. And once I realise I've done four, I've done the other four. They're two sets. They're not eight. And you can do everything like that. And the runs is exactly how you need to do the runs. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah. Tell Dean how you manage. Because I don't know many people who have got this. Do you manage to get a double A by doing what? Mr. Wilkins, very nice gentleman, gave me four runs in the order of the book. Double A. And where was you then? Was that your first 28? Second 28, I think. Second 20, and you went straight to 21s. And I got Mom Gerard on the next one. And the first thing she said to me, I said, you've done very well on your last appearance. And we're in, mate. <laughs> we're in, yeah. 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 yeah, she really did. But well, they got rid of double A's because of you. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't the last. <laughs> Pete, you won't know what a double A is. No, it's all new. This is all new talk. Yeah, so it's, obviously it's old talk now because they've done away with it. <laughs> came and went, and you didn't even know. <laughs> how, long, how long was the double A about? Then? It was a few years. I came in in two thousand, if I'm not mistaken. What year did you do it? Well, about 2011, 2012. The new system came in in two thousand, so the scoring system came in then. Um, but something you probably none of you know is that there used to be an E, double A, A B C D, and E. Yeah. What was the difference between E and D then? Well, you could get three E's and you got redlined, four D's and you got redlined. It was kind of an oversight, the E, where they've realised they've kind of complicated it a little bit um, and it went fairly quickly. Yeah. They still do the U? Yes, yeah, so U is basically yeah, ungraded for today. Can you, can you as a student ask for a U? Say you're having a bad day, you're having a meltdown and you can't see nothing and you're, can you just say, can I have a U? You can. One thing people don't generally know is that you can cancel your appearance at any time. Right up to the fact of before it starts. So you can walk them behind them and sit down in that chair and say, I, I want to cancel today. That's no consequence to you. Zero. Zero. So that's a good thing for them to know, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's important. I mean, one of the students really should have done it the other day. He'd had some bad couple of nights. He's in the hospital with his family a couple of nights. He hasn't slept very well. He hasn't managed to study like he would normally do or prepare. And you go up and you're, you're all over the show. And he said, I wish I'd have cancelled. But I was, he said it was too late. It wasn't. Uh. Right there. Well, I go for it and just say I'm here because I want to be here, but I'm not going to do the appearance because I really am not in the show. Yeah, I would never have known that. Take the Fifth Amendment. Plead yeah, the Fifth. Yeah, 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 plead the Fifth Amendment. I went early, yeah. a day early on an appearance once. Well, I don't know <laughs> they gave me the day. You're keen. They gave me the day. I remember the day. But he told me the wrong day. So I did look at the card and I was sitting at the palestra like that. You, what's I that? The badge number. 
or when I was doing the, doing the knowledge, the call over partners, is why don't we, when we all pass, get our badge number tattooed on us. I've covered it tattooed. <laughs> And lo and behold, I was the only one that had it done. And it, that was never done. No. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many said they was uh, going to do it? Four or five. Four or five, and you yeah. was the only yeah. one who had yeah. the tattoo. Yeah. Oh, that's my word, David. Hold you your are, hand yeah. up like that, so that so, towards that one, so they yeah, can see so it. So they can right. see it. Yeah. Uh, Seven two eight zero oh, two. So if I lose my badge, I'll cut your hand off. Yeah, that's well, it. Well, cut well, your hand off. Just cut your hand off. Get a new one. So when you get badge and build at some pancreas, you just go. Easy tiger. And then get arrested for assault. I've got no tattoos. You tattooed up, Dave? Not one. Not one, yeah. Not one. All no. the best. All the best criminals don't have tattoos. Oh no. no. Covered up, like can't see it. <laughs> I had guilty on that one. You have? On my 60th birthday, my son took me to uh, the place in Exmouth Market and said, Dad, there you go, you've always wanted a tattoo. I've actually got a, a heart with Susan's name. Ah. Uh, don't get me all teary-eyed now. <laughs> Jesus Sorry. Christ. I, I, I thought you was going to say you had the Arsenal badge. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I thought that was no, shameful. No, nothing that. Either yeah. are you used to in anything like LTDA or UCG or anything like that? I have hands up. I do subscribe to the LTDA. I, I was you're a fan, though, aren't you? To a point, yes. I would I would say that for the obvious reasons, for over forty two years of driving a cab, I had two periods whilst using their uh, excellent six scheme, which served me well. Yeah. On two literally duration of two years, and that helped me out on two separate occasions. Used their uh, legal uh, representation on a, a couple of occasions when a spurious, uh Oh, I remember you saying yeah. before, yeah. 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 before. In the previous yeah. podcast, yeah. you yes. said about it. Yeah. Yeah. We've touched on that before. It, they do what it says on the tin, basically. As for some of the representation on cab trade matters, they could be a bit more forceful. I think mm. it's too much of a, a very much a cosy situation where they don't really want to upset the apple cart. Yeah, up there. That's uh, that. That's my personal opinion up there, and you really need someone such as like a, a Bob Crow type to go in and really. Yeah, and I think that's the only way to deal with people when people, as they tearful treat us cab drivers with such contempt. I think you really do need someone who can actually go in there and yeah, well, stamp on the desk and. We, we discussed this yesterday with, with Trevor, and one of the problems, the, the, the huge problem with our trade, is we are very, very fragmented. Oh, well, yeah. that's it. You, you, you have got, uh, what's our numbers now, 14,000. You've got 14,000 individual... Idiots. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> I'm one. I, I rest my... Ca- no, yeah. you've got 14,000 individual business yeah. people who every nobody sees eye to eye with... Everybody else. But I think what my personal opinion is, there is a lot of talented people within the cab trade who would do more than an adequate job to get up and represent us as a body. But unfortunately, as soon as people raise their head above the pulpit... Parapet. Parapet. There's a far... There's far too many people only willing to shoot you down. True, true. I don't uh, think anyone's ever been shot above the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> the I don't know. There's a few that should be. Yeah, no, it's no, true. Uh, it's and, true. And that is it. There is, uh, you, on a day-to-day basis, even, you, you stand yeah. around. It's talk, always been the same, Peter. I know, you know it, it is. It, it's, it, it's rock, but I say I can see the reason as to why they yep. won't because you make a if you go on save our black taxes you make a, a comment on something the derogatory remarks you get from people and you're absolutely right with the fact that there is a lot of people in our industry that are super articulate super intelligent and super thoughtful but they put their head above the pulpit and the vicar comes over <laughs> and smacks them with a but they, they put their head above it and it, yeah. you're right they uh, is there such a word as disarticulation? Or have I just invented that? Probably. But the fact of what people say against you mm. is so um, schoolboy. Classic example. <laughs> I, I, post, I put a post up. My daughter jumped in a cab at Charing Cross and she was going to an event at the v And the cab driver at Charing Cross asked her for the postcode of the v and which like took me back. Yep. And I just happened to post, the, like they the said what I've just said on the evening. People said, well, made up stories that didn't happen again. And it's it's basically, well, why on earth 
Would you make it up? Would you Would you make it up? And yeah, but whatever. They're all looking for an argument. That's why well, I don't don't go on Twitter. Just put you down, and they just spell put nothing. Mm. Mm. Well, if you go on Twitter, just use it to, to to read or watch or whatever. Don't get involved because people no. will just jump all over you. Sometimes, sometimes. say ridiculous things at you. Sometimes. Well, the thing is, with, with Twitter, you used to mention the word cycle, and straight away you mm. would have a barrage of <laughs> of comments. It's like there must be a, a red flag that goes up to every <laughs> cycling campaignist in the country. That <clears throat> oh, you don't mind being attacked by cyclists, though, do you? No, I wouldn't but, be bothered. Nah, bomb you, cyclists. Cyclists, no. Yeah, and, and, that, and that gets us back to saying about likes of the LTDA and all that. Do you yeah. think knowledge students should join that then for that protection when I, you're coming I, into I, I things like that? You, you certainly do need, because it is, if you go up there, try and defend yourself on that, you have, you're on to a hiding or nothing. Mm. You really do. I, I will say that they're... Their, their legal representation is like second to none. Yeah. Mm. Well, UCG I, got legal UCG are very good, yeah. Mm. Very no, good, I know yeah. Driver, I won't yeah. mention him, but he, he had a, quite a serious complaint cool against him. Mm-hmm. And uh, LCDA, he was with, he was out there six somewhere, and they actually went and got all the CCTV. Yeah, they're very thorough. And done it, and he got like, no further action. I think, if you, you, I think the LCDA, they were... Knowledge students. Yeah. Oh, that's that's how you should yeah. yeah. You just think you it's for your protection, but yeah. obviously yeah. it's not. Because you're out there every day, you just don't know what's around the corner. Mm. And it, well, I mean, you'd be on your own otherwise without... without. It's worth 15, 20 quid a month. Yeah, especially with the um, free points that are accumulating yeah. now. We was talking about the free points for touching the phone yesterday. Well, it was six points. Well, it's not touching it. It's actually holding it over. Yeah, once yeah. it's fixed to the dash. It's Dave, we've had this dash. argument before. Yeah, yeah, it still isn't Can we actually clarify really on that? Right, you, you, your phone is in... A cradle. Ma- cradle on the thing. So, therefore, are you allowed... Say, for argument's sake, you pull up the traffic lights, Doesn't stationary... It. Can you touch? Doesn't matter if you're the traffic lights or not. You're in control of the vehicle. Once the engine's yeah. it's the ignition's yeah. on, that, that's it. That's that's that's, that's the, It doesn't matter if you're driving or not. You can still touch it. Otherwise, you can't touch. Put your air conditioning on. You can't put your windows down. They're well, just yeah, switches. No, no, yeah. The phone becomes a switch attached to the dash. True. That's all it is. The same. That's why but. they will then say prolonged use or distracting yourself by using it becomes driving without due care and attention. It's a different charge to using. It the is phone. a different charge. It's the undue care and attention that is the grey area. So as you looked down to touch your phone, if anything happens in front of your vehicle that someone's witnessing, then they can say he didn't see that. Maybe a they, child they runs out. They could say the same note by doing your radio or, or they, doing your, They or could, else. but they couldn't nick you funny enough, could it? We're, we're, we're driving back to your current intentions. Driving back to your current intentions. Yes, but they're, they're, they're saying that they're applying it. You are absolutely right on that particular point. But they are applying it with the fact of touching the phone, whereas touching your heater, they're not applying it. Yeah, they, the, the police are not taking that as a... Yeah, because they've got no record of it. They have no way of knowing. See, with the phone, they take the phone away from you, yeah. and they have a look. See, and they say, "Oh, at that exact second that you touch that, or you've uh, answered the call, or you've accepted yeah. the job, that's their evidence." If you was to touch the, the rear heated windscreen or your air conditioning, there would be no record of it anywhere that you'd done that, would there? Yeah. For them to know that you'd done that, that you was distracted. On a similar subject to actually touching your phones, the new CabVision CabPay system basically relies on the drivers own phone system so your phone is sitting in the cradle you have to put it's not linked as the old systems where automatically it would go straight from the meter into the unit in the back with a price mm-hmm. coming up i have to physically put the the price yeah. of the fare in and press confirm right what is the difference between that and having your own handheld <laughs> unit you have to use it when you stop the vehicle there's no difference in if, if you've got low pay, as a lot of drivers do have, there's no difference between using low pay, which is not approved, and cab vision, which is approved. The systems ba- work basically yeah. exactly the same. You have to manually press. The, the only difference being with low pay and cab vision is you've got a button to press to print off a Bluetooth. There's nothing to stop But you've got you. to be doing this when you're stationary, surely. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, with the can you be done for undue care and attention whilst you're stationary with the engine rolling? Yes. Go on, give an example where you think that would work. If the traffic pulls away. So, for instance, you're do, you're doing something, yes. and the, the traffic lights go to green, and it pulls away, and there's a gap now in front of you. That's driving without due care and attention. 
Here we go. Do you want another example? Yeah, go on. I ain't got one. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the example then I'm sitting on the side of the road, I haven't joined the traffic flow and I'm, I've yeah, got the engine rolling. away from a roundabout. Anything that's, you're, you're, now, you're now driving, about, if you've not kept up with the flow of traffic, which is one of the big old things, isn't it? Keeping up with the flow of traffic. If you're not doing something like that, i.e. the lights change, the, the traffic moves in a roundabout mm-hmm. in front of you, you're, net, you're playing with a radio or your, the phone or anything else. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's going to be a discretion of the theory. Yeah, of course it is. And if, you, you know, if you accept the job on a, uh, an app, it's like when you're playing, I don't know, Tom Bowler bingo or something. Mm. Bingo? Who's bingo. playing bingo? No, it's just, no, 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 I'm watching a video. I'm watching a video. You know, yeah. if, you, if you, like I say, you dock someone over yeah. and they go for oh, the phone that, and you use yeah, your phone yeah. to accept yeah. the job. If you're you playing bingo and knock someone over. If you're watching a video or... Well, oh, I, cool. I did the watching a video one. I know I saw someone on YouTube that was doing it, but that's yeah. just obscene. Isn't it? They were, yeah. Cab drivers do it. Well, you, you see some of those Teslas. It's like <laughs> it's like being in the IMAX the yeah. screen <laughs> on, oh, the, yeah. on the front of their cars. How, how is that not a distraction for whilst you're driving? The pure size of the screen. You, you cannot be not have your eyes on that screen whilst you're driving. Well, getting into the fact of the distraction then as well, what about the PHV drivers that have got three phones sitting in front of their eyes like this it's on different oh, mounts? Exactly. And on the eyeliner well, drawer. Yeah. That's I mean, I am one of those, I don't even have a, a bloody smelly thing hanging from the wing mirror. I ate anything that's in my line of sight. I want to know the ways you, that you work. And that's so used to, how do you work? In other words, do you use apps, streets, ranks? What is it you do? What, what do you do for your work? And I know a little bit about you, but everyone else doesn't. I'll do a school run. It's my first job every day. Two boys, Lewisham, and they go to a school in Pimlico. Oh, so it's a pre-booked kind of t- regular well, deal? Yeah, Monday to Friday, and I'll pick about 3.40, and I'm home by 5. So that fi- starts your day and finishes your day. Yep. It's a nice little number. Obviously Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday. Weekend to I actually do the work run. I actually take my partner into work of the morning and pick her up in the afternoon. But does she pay? Only on strike days. <laughs> 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 where, where she can actually reclaim the uh, uh, reclaim so you work you then you work what yeah, well, well, can I ask what area you drop, drop uh, good luck. I drop her she's shit yeah, I drop her at Lombard Street every morning she walks oh, well, through the alleyway in the work straight away. she walks straight into the alleyway through to, into Cornhill which from end of November we can no longer access from Princess Street mm-hmm. yep. I, uh, uh, I, like that wrong, I thought you could no it, it's actually stopping it's you, 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 you're going to have to do what I do, drop her in Cornhill. No, Cornhill you still get from there. No, no, you, no, access, you're not going to be able to access Princess Street into Cornhill from November. You can't you sure? You, you know, yeah, no, you no. but you'll be able to drive, if you wanted anything, you're kind of going to be going towards Bank Junction and everything's going to be a kind of in and out kind of process. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't drive Bishop's Gate. No, you, so you, I, I I, as, far, as far as I could understand, and let me, obviously I take an active interest because some, sometimes I actually do pick her up. Well, then explain Cornhill. it better then. You can't get it from Leadenhall Street. Yeah. yeah so you can't go from Bishop's Gate. So no, no, Bishop's Gate. You, you can get go it go from Fred, Nod- Fred Needle and turn around. You could do that. Is that gone? You used to do the Bartholomew, yep. right, Fred Needle, left. That's been long gone, gone basically, since the... Since the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, c- getting back to what we were saying, yes. Yeah, I pick up... Well, I take my partner into work in the morning, and I... And re- you work, re- work re- retrie- Retriever, depending on what... She works various shifts between yeah. 8 and 10... And so w- in that shift, you're, you've gone in, you've dropped, picked her up, dropped her off and picked her up, but then you'd work during the yeah, middle no, of the I've day. Got, um, Do you stop for lunch? No, I'm a, I'm a real old stickler, basically. I'll, uh, I'll head over straight uh, back over London Bridge, fill up Southwark Bridge Road for the Diesel. Like, pe- petrol, t- TX Edium. Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 then I'll uh, make my way up to the rank at Waterloo. It's old habits die hard. Loads of drivers do it because you see the same f- at yeah, the yeah, same yeah. time every day. It's just a routine, it, isn't it? It is just a routine, isn't it? and Waterloo is not a bad rank to actually kick off your day. Mm-hmm. I work through to about one o'clock, one thirty. Stop for lunch for half hour, forty five minutes. How far is the rank going back at Waterloo when you turn up there? Depending if it's the if I we're doing the what we call term as the earliest, and that means either eight o'clock, nine o'clock start. It's usually pretty running. Mm. 10 o'clock start, it's obviously sometimes it's halfway back down the slope, which since the while is doing the works on the station, it, it's not so bad because it's basically half a rank at the moment. So it tends to run pretty well. And that's the rest of the day. Do you use apps? I do subscribe to all free apps, but have I done a job on them? No. Never. I used to. I'm a real objective to the fact of why should we pay for our own work? 
No, that's yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, but what if that work was a bonus on, po- on top of what you wouldn't have had? Then bonus is a bit less or a bribe. Well, it is well, bonus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah bribes. If you, actually, if you actually speak to most, right, back going back long times when I was on Comcab back in the in the eighties, drivers used to use the apps and the or the radio as was then called to get into work and then to get home. So what's changed? That's the same uh, deal. Basically, well, I'm bringing someone in and I'm taking someone home. So therefore. Oh, you've got yeah. that part covered. Yeah. But to be honest with you, so we, if, even if the app covered that job for m- a lot of people, the in and the out job, mm. then, you know, you can't complain. It's doing exactly what the apps, the com cabs and the dialer cabs did all those years ago. Oh, yeah. But obviously then you, with the way it was structured then, you, A, you would get your run in. If you was, say for argument's sake, you were sitting on the rank at St Paul's and a job was called on Gresham Street, you'd be metre on, you'd be clocked down straight away. Mm-hmm. Whereas now with the apps, you're driving around, how long is it going to take you to get round to, to Gresham Street, 10 minutes, mm-hmm. then you've got to give them five minutes grace to, you've done 15 minutes, 15 minutes in terms of actual, if you was actually driving or, it amounts to a fair bit. I think that's what a lot of old drivers overlook, that fact that mm-hmm. you on some of those app jobs, you're losing 15 minutes. And then on the fact that you're losing whatever percentage they're taking oh, no, percentage, at one yeah. moment in you, you, you You're on the apps, John? No. None of them. None of them. I've got, I've got downloaded and I do so on occasionally, but I'm, so I'm just happy with the work on the street, yeah. themselves, stations. No. I, I don't do it on the apps, but I, when it was, was it Tuesday when it's chucking it down, I was, I was over at Westfield, coming back into Holland Park Avenue and uh, it was pinging all over the place. It was going, it was like, got, so you've got them on, yeah. so you've, you've got the apps on, but you just don't pick that one up. The, 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 the passengers can see you, but they, he's just teasing them, isn't he? <laughs> Here I am, you can't have me. Yeah, no. this is the old adage, what we used to say back in the day, is when it's busy on the radio, it's busy on the street. First off, go back to the touts in the city yeah. before yeah. before licensing of... Yeah, 1993, four, five, six. Something like that. I think prior to that, actually, the, the before the licensing of... of, of Lou Susie of, Lampard. Of, yeah, round, round about round that that period, what you would have, you would have loads of drivers, and this is my own theory on why the trade is in the, the state that it's actually in now. Oh, let's and, hear it. And basically what it was... You would have hundreds of drivers who's on dialer cab, com cab. Back in the day, in the mid eighties, most of the large corporations within the city of London, it was written into their T's and C's of their contracts that if they worked after the hours of eight o'clock, they would be guaranteed a cab home to regardless where they lived. So you would have every driver, radio driver, would head towards the city of a night time. The city would be buzzing. There'd be people on the streets everywhere. But you'd have loads of cabs parked up, waiting for that elusive job to South End or yeah. wherever you. Yeah, and that and that's what's caused it. it people got really p- pissed off actually with having to see cabs sitting around yes. going up to them, and they would be blanking at all the jobs, all the bread and butter jobs, the Clapham and Wandsworth, that everyone nowadays they'd bite their arm off yeah. to, to actually get. But we that, caused it. They, they, we, we we caused it. There was coming out when. Uh, Solomon Brothers moved from the city to Victoria Plaza. It was like Custer's last stand of uh, eight o'clock. You'd have hundreds of cabs. Just uh, there was one particular guy. I remember his name clear as well. Called Matthew. He lived at South End, and he said he had had a cab home every single night for three months to South End. And all those drivers would be driving around. Everyone, whoa, might get Matthew tonight. It's like the. Uh, Fool's gold, really. Oh. And in the meantime, you're sitting there wasting time. And the well, other you, people you, not getting fares. You, you could have done two or three jobs over to Clapham or, yeah. or what have you. And that's and then people then, that was the advent of the the touts, when people, Johnny come lately, would go and buy his four-door car, and then they was at, it was advocated in the evening standard by Richard Little John. He went, this new form of cabs out there on the street, you negotiate your price with a driver. Oh, wow, he even advertised it for he, them. He, yeah. Basically, he, 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 after a while, he did retract his yeah. his comments on it. But that, that was that was the start of the downfall. So these are the bad things. We're actually into the subject yes. of the, the, the... Commissions. The dark side commissions. of the... And yes. So you're against commissions. Is that right, paying a commission? Like, yeah, commission I, you don't I, like, I, 15 or well, 20%. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I, John, are you well, for I'm, or against commissions? If you someone... Uh, Dean as well, you can answer that. No, I'm not. I don't care. You don't care. No, I'm don't not. Care. Dean, I'm, it doesn't. You're against commission. 
Fifty fifty really. Fifty fifty phone a friend and I'm I'm completely I couldn't care less. You. If like you know, like sometimes there may be people that have like, like hotels and uh, they may get a phone call and they, you see this happen, they come past the, the rank. Are you against or for or Oh like, no, 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 that's a different question. Right? That's what about that with the dinner the doorman's it's getting a drink? It's annoying. It's annoying when someone you're on point. Would you do it? Oh, yeah. Would you do it? If, if I say I rang it, let's talk about perfectly. There's a two cab job there. It's uh, 100 quid, but you've got to give us a tenner to give to the doorman. No. Would you do it? No. no. Can I ask why not? Because he's asked me for it. That, yeah. I'm, get, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, cab, I'm the first, I'm going to get the job anyway, mate. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've, I've been pulled up five minutes before the people come out by a doorman, a big hotel in, in the West End. Mm-hmm. And I'll give him a tenner because he's pulled me off early. So, here you go, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's tipping. Know. You're saying it's, it's tipping, tipping as opposed to yeah. bribing. It's yeah, the two exactly. different oh. things. But I can understand why the doorman does it. So obviously, if he just gets yeah. it back down, so why wouldn't he? If I was a doorman and, and someone and offers it, me money, am I going to say yeah. no? Yeah. Yeah. That's my driver. principle Same to take driver. money. Every driver gets in his cab in the morning, goes out with sort of as much money as he can. He has to take a good job and get a bit to whoever. So be it. So I take it that when you do the school run, I take it whoever pays you, they do it for free. They don't charge you, they don't take any of your money, do they? I've not got a contract with a school. They've got the contract with the school or the council or whatever. They look for drivers. This is how much they want to pay. Do you want to do it? I'll say yes or I'll say no. Uh, but you, you, you're very controversial with the doorman thing. I was going to ask Pete then. Would you, would you give a tip to a doorman? I've never, in all 42 years of driving, I have never, I've been asked on many occasions. And I've me, always, me and you. Always, both. Always, 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 always said no. Because uh, and and if someone phoned you and said there's a job, it costs a commission. I don't, I don't mean the door. No, yeah. yeah. So if it's already say, uh, so yeah. for pre-arranged, someone rings you up and says, we've got to give the jo- doorman a, a tenner and there's under a quid job there, would you go and do the job? I've never been that fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's <laughs> hypothetically. <laughs> hypothetically, Pete. Say I ring you and yeah, I well, say, yeah, Pete. Yeah. No, if, 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 you, yeah. if you're a, a known associate of... Well, so I'd turn around and say, well, I'll take you for a coffee or something. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll take you out, yeah, you go and see. Well, <laughs> a bit extreme. A, a, along those lines, something along those, I don't mm. think. A guy gave me a, a guy I don't really know that well. He said, oh, you do tours, don't you? I said, I've got a tour for you. I had the tour guides here yesterday. We've done a podcast on the Worshipful Company of Tour Guides. And I do remember you telling me you was involved at the early days. Yes, I, no, I was, I'm a qualified... Uh, Worshipful Company tour guide? Yeah. And yeah. yeah it was so am I. You're one as well? I've done the calls, yeah. Uh-huh. Whilst I was doing it, I actually enjoyed it and got a fair amount of work. But then, unfortunately, I had a, a bout of illness 13 years ago. And since then, my... Uh, so, well, I'll, I'll test your tour guide knowledge on the basics, yeah? So, what's the, what's the story with the uh, King Charles I statue? What, on Whitehall? Well, kind of on Whitehall, but it's on Charing Cross, actually. But <laughs> if you want to say <laughs> Whitehall, <laughs> but I'll let you know. I'm not doing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you put me on the spot there, haven't you? Eh? Obviously, they executed him, didn't they, King Charles I? Yeah, but... The, There's the, a black dot on the, 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 the clock. On the, on That's the, the black exactly. on the clock, yeah. We heard that one yesterday as well, and they wanted to keep that secret because it was like, don't tell everybody. Out, the guy was asked take that statue away and destroy it. So they paid him to take it away, which he did. That's right. He, he didn't destroy it. And he told people, he's, he's melted it down, he's making That's spoons right. or knives and forks, and, whatever, and he's selling them on, isn't he? And then when he came back, he said, uh, it happened, he happened to have the statue again, didn't he? So he sold it back to him. He never made a spoon out of it. So he sold it three times, didn't he? He sold the actual <laughs> statue. What's the spot? That it's on. What's the? That's the death centre of London. That's the modern centre. Yeah, London. but that's not what it's called. Why is it called Charing Cross then? These are the basics. What did you do? You do the course used to. I haven't even done it. It's very basic course. <laughs> <laughs> As you say, it's, it's, it's very. When Pete did the knowledge, I don't think Charing Cross was in London. No, it wasn't. That? It wasn't. <laughs> it was part of the suburb. You you do know Whips Cross, Charing Cross. Yeah. They are all the locations of when they stopped with Eleanor's body, bringing it down. They stopped and stayed overnight each night, and they they made a cross memorial in those places. And Charing Cross. Charing means uh, bend of the river. I learned all of this yesterday. <laughs> Charing means bend of the river, and Charing Cross is where the cross for where Eleanor was, the body was in rest. And the, the steeple that you see is a is a replica of. Is that the one outside Charing Cross? Yes, that's like, that's a replica of what well, was supposed to be them. standing on King yeah. Charles the First Island, anyway. So uh, yeah, I should uh, be an instructor on the course. Exactly. They were, well, that long time, but that's right. a newly gained knowledge from yesterday. Though, it was yesterday. There. We had. <laughs> I learned. But the, the interesting thing I learned yesterday was why is it called the Mao and not the Mall? Now, for, it seems obvious. We're just saying the Mao. We're just saying Pow Mao, whatever. Um, and then they, they said that Pally Mally is um, a French game, mm-hmm. similar to Croquet Pally Mally. That's why it's called Pow Mao. Um, and it's from the French pronunciation of Mao, 
not the Americanization. I don't know. We would have mm. we would have called it Mall anyway mall. because it's Chiswick Mall, and it's the Mall. Mall. So it, it takes the French pronunciation rather than... Depends which part of London you come from. Whether, True. You, whether you're from the right side of the river or the wrong side of the river. Well, it was all from the wrong well, side well, of the river. Well, I, I, think, I think you're outnumbered here because you got free from the right side of the river. I'm a, I'm a 50-50. My nan and granddad are at Peckham with Old oh, Kent Road. There you go. There's always, always a claim, <laughs> and, um, Mitigating <laughs> circumstances. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that part of the family, we disowned them. <laughs> and then I'm Stepney. That's uh, it. Bethnal Green, Stepney, Mile End. Yeah, that's the history thing. But we have touched on this thing, which is the dark side of... The taxi is, trade. The, is um, that the only dark side? Is there anything else? Yeah, there's loads. What, what, is it? what else is dark then? I'll tell you what was dark, and you knew. I don't know if we can say this on here, but you oh. probably will leave it in knowing you. Wasn't there a dark side with a with an examiner once? Oh, jeez. Oh, I, I, I will leave that comment in, but oh, that's yeah. about the end of that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> There's anyway. something I want to know a little bit. A lighter note. Go on, a lighter note. Yeah, sorry. It's a lighter note. It's about vehicles driven. I've got to ask you three because obviously I, uh, after three or four years, what have I driven? Apart from years ago, well, lorries, lorries. I'm talking about taxis, driven yeah. taxis. Obviously, I've driven a lot. But and we'll start, I believe, I believe Pete had one called Daisy. That was your first horse, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to run for me to run through my CV of vehicles? I can probably actually r- rattle off. The, uh, no, the, the whole registration lot. numbers. Don't do the registrations. <laughs> we, we're on our X. Uh, 455S was from Stuart's garage in Fulham, which is a very large garage in Fulham. After that, I went over to... What uh, cab was it? That was a... FX4? No. T- uh, yeah. Uh, Austin? Yeah. Austin. There's an old Austin. 2.5 Austin. Ma- manual gearbox, manual, yep. sti- manual steering. Did you have a luggage door? Yes, there was a... L- <laughs> <laughs> Did it, did it have the Dalek uh, indicators? No, it didn't. No, no. My old uncle was a cab driver, and he's had a beautiful cab with a coconut matting in the back, with the leather brown leather seats, like a, a Chesterfield <laughs> sofa, with a, a centre pulley strap. So if you didn't want to, to speak to the driver, you could pull the, the glass partition up, and it would on little notches, and you could lower it down a, a cord, accordingly. So. Yeah. In that four double five S back in the day, was obviously there's no such thing as intercoms or anything like that. And if you wanted to speak to the passenger, what you used to do, you used to illegally remove the partition stick. Oh yes, yes. Remember you that? stop stick. Uh, it was called a stop yeah, stick. Stop, yeah, we had a stop stick to stop the window opening further, so that they couldn't get through and strangle you. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was for that. Yeah, it was. So well, you could st- get it was called well, a stop that strangle. Was, that was one of the reasons. That stop was one stick. of the reasons they could. And but if I forgot all about the stop. Straight stick. away, if you had anyone interested in the back of the cab, the stick would come out and you'd be slide it open. You'd, you'd, put, your, you'd, you'd put your arm <laughs> over there and. and you didn't work nights in those days. Of, I, uh, I did. Dick Turpin was about. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be very, very wear, very yeah. careful. But when Pete, you were, we, you've just made so much little flooding back memories because. We, and certainly me and definitely you, we were last of a generation to use some certain features that don't exist anymore. For a start, the stop stick was one of those. And the other one was electric windows came in. Oh, yes. We, we had <laughs> we only slide down windows, we didn't we? We were spoiled because basically if you... You passenger come to your your near side window. You had to lean over. <laughs> you, had, you, had, you had to lean up. You had to lean over. Actually, before was you used to be able to put your arm out the window and open the door and open the door for your passengers yep. on the pass on the offside, yeah. uh, which was another. And another. if you left your keys in the cab, all you had to do is just. Wiggle the window a little. So <laughs> what, wiggle, 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 it comes so what kept the window up? What was a little, a little no, latch? No, a little catch. <laughs> a little catch. A little catch. A little <laughs> you just slid it across, <laughs> and if you jiggled it, it would jiggle the catch open. You, you couldn't lock your cab. Couldn't leave anything in because it's so easy yeah. to get in. It, it, it was. Oh, a, yeah. You used to see cab drivers. They rather than use their keys, they just got just the window. <laughs> what year was that? One the first one you had. That, that was eighty. That was eighty one. And then, then I moved on to. I moved over to Coles at Surrey Docks. Brian Cole and his old. Man, Frank had a small fleet of cabs. I went automatic there. I had V V forty seven, which was a wasn't a bad cab. I had that for a couple of months, and I decided to buy go mushing, and I bought one of the first ever ill fated FX four Rs, which is a two point two Rover. Which, <laughs> well, it's dreadful. It, it, at worst cab they've ever. No, the ever, Metro cab is the worst cab ever ever made. I, I think that was probably better than the Metro. No, it it would if you had four people in. And wanted to go up Highgate Hill. They go backwards. You'd have to say, "I'm oh, sorry, I this I'm sorry." Yeah, you, 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 you just you just can't do it. I, luckily, I kept that for 
to minimum of two years and then I was fortunate to got a good track because it was quite low mileage because I've always been a bit of a lazy sod. So, so uh, mushing, by the way, is uh, a, a owner driver. Yes, a musher. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. owner driver. Bought bought from the uh, the wonderful man in Overton's on yeah. Wandsworth Bridge Road. Remember, many an afternoons sat in the. It was like a a maternity unit, a hospital. You'd have twenty cab drivers, expectant cab drivers, pacing up and down in the waiting room whilst their cabs was being repaired or not, or not being repaired. Yeah, so I kept that, and then I bought eight. But no, I sold you H160, didn't H160 I? H160 YUL. Uh, before, no, it was C, C43 CYL. What's that, your next one or the uh, one before? Next one, yeah, I kept that for a number of years. No, that's, that's before the H160, because yeah, yeah, after yeah, that you had yeah. an S, S plate. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the last cab I ever owned, the S yeah. plate. And yeah, I sold you like, uh, that wonderful... Great cab. Great cab. That, they, they was the, uh, the Nissan 2.7... Uh, yeah. Was absolutely bulletproof, and I know for a fact that a lot of uh, cab garages, particularly those that specialise in engine buildings, went out of business because that was a, that there was nothing to do. Yeah, uh, I think it was Beasley Engineering down the or one of those Halvey Engineering down the Old Kent Road. They when you got your weird. your you got the TX one. I remember it was the TX one, the yeah. S play. It must it must have been the very first. Oh, I think R. Oh, was the first TX ones. Yeah, I had S. S yeah, so it was one year older. S741 LGN. I wanted to plush it up. I had a, a beautiful leather seat made up especially, and a guy in M&O's, I, it was made up out of Connolly Hyde. I don't know if you know. Connolly Hyde is what they actually put in Rolls Royces. And I had this cab driver's seat made up out of Connolly Hyde, and it was like... Saw you every, come in, didn't they? Every, everybody who said it was in awe of that. I want that seat, basically. No. Where did it end up now? It's in scrap metal yard, isn't it? I kept that cab until two years before it was due to come off plate. I sold it to my good friend Andy at Royal Taxes. He put it in his fleet for a couple of years and then he basically... Got the 10 grand back or something. No, no, he, he, he actually took the engine out and sold the engine to South Africa. Oh. And uh, as a momentum, I actually asked him to uh, take the for hire sign off as a I yeah. wanted as a momentum on the. You mean a memento? Uh, a momentum is a uh, sort of motion going forward, but it's memento. A, is I went to school down the old Kent Road. <laughs> oh, no. Don't be fooled. That's like tragic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Any, anyway, um, the TX one had a really funny floor. When you opened the doors, all the water fell on you. There was two floor floors with a TX one. There was a vacuum. When you shut the door, there was a vacuum. It was airtight, so it would shut the doors and they'd bounce open again because you created an airlock. Mm. boink, So you couldn't shut the doors. You had to get out of the cab and go and shut the doors yourself, didn't you? Because it was open all the time. And the other one was that when it rained, the water would catch in the guttering. So when you opened it, it just fell on you. Yeah, you it needed a seam on it. They they started putting a seam on it to stop the water coming over. But then they did start putting those... uh, the plastic deflectors. Yes. Over the what other uh, floors did they get? Because the TX one was had all the floors, but it had still had the Nissan engine, didn't yeah, which it? Which was a uh, that, that was I say that was a bulletproof. Yeah, engine. and then they went to a Mitsubishi, I think. After that, yes. No, I th- or was it in Ita- I think it was an Italian. All I've driven, I made the few TX fours. All like, most of them, most of them were out of Ascots with the warranty. Oh, you pay me over top, but peace of mind. Yeah. The Vitos, the, the colour Vitos. I'm there in the, the TXE. My favourite is the TX4, to be honest. You know, it's all got pluses, but so I feel t- like a bit like John Michel with you on the TXE. I'll tell you, when I drove his TX4, John, he said oh. to me, drive it one day, because I think you drove mine, didn't you? The yeah, TX, and he's, he's, and it, it's a lot smaller, and I was two stone heavier than I am now. Yeah. And uh, I had to get out of it, because straight away he, he, he said to me, you look like a circus bear in that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went, I've got to get the TXE, I can't be driving this little That thing. was the other problem with the TX4s and the fairways. You know me, Dave, I'm a giant of a man, right? Mm-hmm. In the fairway, I my seat position, my head touched the roof, and I'm 5'7". So if you were 6'2", mm-hmm. you were... I actually spent two lovely years in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a Vito, and going from in a TX into a Vito, it was... God, I could have a party in it. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was so spacious. so spacious. The only thing about the drawback from the the Vita, you you used to be able to put your left leg up on the bulkhead in a TX just to to stretch your leg out. Whereas saying that you that didn't actually need it in the yeah. in the Vita because you did if you adjusted your seat right the way back. You know what? I don't hear anyone say anymore, Pete. But back in the day when you first passed out, a, an experienced driver would always say to you, "How's your knee?" 
tempting fate here. I've never suffered with any of my bones or yeah. back or anything. I maybe I've been fortunate, or maybe it's just where I'm a lazy sod and don't spend enough time yeah. actually in the cab. But you see drivers jump up when you go around Lincoln's in fields to spend a penny. You see drivers get out and they go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stretching it. Don't count you anyone saying it. You get a pain in your knee because you're braking and accelerating more than you've done normally because you do a shift of work that would then bring muscle fatigue in your knee muscles. No, I used to get a lot worse than that. I don't get pain there, but my legs were bad when I was a HGV driver. Back in the 80s and yeah. all that, you doubled the clutch all the time. Going crazy. Yeah, so you were two times to clutch change to get it. it out. Yeah, clutch to get it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So, and then you would, uh, yeah. Most lorries, I think they were going automatic now anyway yeah. as well. But, yeah, driving a cab is a lot easier than a truck, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had power steering, though, didn't you? Not initially in a scammer I had. It was very rough, yeah. I didn't even have a seat in the first truck, tipper I drove back. Yeah. It was at El Ridge, 1970. So what was it? It was mid-80s then when I passed that. And it had a crate that you sat on with a cushion. Yeah, no seat belt, no seat. <laughs> no help and safety. <laughs> that was 1986 or something like that, yeah. And that was working on things like, I was working on, I think I was working on uh, the British Library then. Yeah. Up by, um, oh, yeah, I know, remember, Saint you Angus. built that, single handed. Yeah, all on my own, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Health of sitting down a lot is not great, is it, for us when we're no. in the cab. And so many drivers don't get out and walk around. And use the excuse. I'm guilty of that. I'm very God, if that. Any excuse yeah. to get out and walk around the cab and open the door, just do it. You've, you've let the yeah. blood flow back yeah, to your legs. Exactly. That's the same with studying knowledge, though. You can also be sitting there so long, they need to get up and go yeah, yeah, yeah. And clear your head. Then you well, if back. they've got the new Apple Watch, because they're all Apple Watched up, the Apple Watch tells you to stand now. It will yeah. oh, give you yeah. gives you a warning and says it's time to stand and yeah. uh, don't keep sitting down or it's also time to meditate. It says. So having said that, man, what's your top tips for doing the lodge? Join you, Wizan. You join the school. Join Wizan. Hundred percent. But I'm, I'm I would I would have gone oh. for it. Mm. But you. No, I, I don't think many like many people would, would they? Now the school, you get through. There's lots of people. I think would give Sweet up without the backing of a school. Yeah, yeah I know. No. I probably do wish I'd actually attended a school because it would have. Uh, I don't think you'd have done was it. Was there schools then? What schools yeah, was there? Yeah, Do you no, remember? There was the uh, there was the, gen, the general. There used to be a school. Yeah, the London the gen, General. The London General. And there it's was very, a, very famous, the London General School. I mean, it really goes back a long, long time. And there was the, the Greyhound at Penton Street. Oh, I don't, was that above the pub then? Or? No, it was right on the, on the corner. It's called the Greyhound. Right opposite the old carriage office. Oh, the on, shop. On, on Penton Street. Yeah, yeah. Right on, the, on the corner of White Lion Street. And the one what morphed into Knowledge Point. That was previously called something else, I think. Mm-hmm. Going down the Caledonian or something like that. It kind of was. That was kind of linked to the London General because if you read this book, this gives you a little bit of history. There was a connection. The London General was to do with the the Army Benevolent Fund mm. or whatever it is. So mm. when you leave the military and they try and get you a job, they fund it and stuff. And they used to fund it and they used to pay. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. The London General yeah. to get you out. And what else would you recommend someone to do the knowledge? Yes. I th- yeah. I f- thinking about it, I probably would say yeah because I think then there is a lot of scope for someone coming in because I think it the, the cab trade will come again, come yeah. good again because I don't see how people can, at the new way of hailing a cab, I don't think it can sustain itself because something's going to come along. If Put this way, if Uber was have to stop surcharging and the way they... Their, their their business model. If it was to be pulled into line and regulated properly, then they would have no. Clients. And that's the reason okay. we should all join someone like the UCG or UTEG. Yeah, or pull, as you just said, they're pulled into line. And, yeah. and that, the only way that's going to happen yeah. is having someone a voice for us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. We need um, to be more so unified. Yeah, hundred percent. One hundred percent. A big unit for what you found as a driver. But if you, if you protest, the other drivers will work it. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not a fan of protests, but what I am a fan of this is if, if you've got a team leader and you're part of that gang and the team leader says this and you don't agree with it necessarily, you still all got to pull in the one direction. So you can put your voice your views of why you don't think it's a good idea and give other ideas. But once the decision's made that we're the team, we're going to go with that and we'll see what the results is. And as 14, 15,000 of us and back in the day, 20, 26,000 there was of us. It was about, it? It was about 24 green but. 2000, yeah, it was. It was 26 yeah, all in all. Yeah. But you, you're very powerful. Going back to previous said, we, we're 14,000 different we're yeah, individual in, businesses. Individual businesses. Yeah, yeah. And uh, trying to get everyone oh, to sing from the same hymn sheet mm. is. Well, you're never going to sing from the same hymn sheet, but my point would be that at least 
you've got to go along with it in some way. You, you had that's why you got to have that representation. And well, you, you only had to look at the demonstrations. You had to, apart from the the first major one against Uber mm-hmm. when we blocked Whitehall. After that, all subsequent demonstrations. They don't it, know more about it, it. It was that you'd have the fake falls at like 200, 300 cabs, and, and that'd be it. Unfortunately, everyone's just worried about the next pound yeah. note. Yeah. yeah. And, and the short term yeah, pound note. Yeah, yeah. Very, just being very, very short sighted and not really wanting to put anything back into yeah. there. But the, the, what they used to say is cab driving is a profession, mini cab driving, private eye is a, is a stopgap. Yeah. For most people, mm. and so and if you see that as a natural progression, you know, like mini cab drivers or private hire or whatever we should call them, do you think that's something that we should tap into to get people on the knowledge? On what's your uh, opinion? Yeah, I think so. Cause I think probably if you ask every mini cab driver, I mean, not everyone, but if you yeah. ask most, the majority of mini cab drivers, would you like to become a black cab driver? Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're they're all, they're all wannabes, really, aren't they? Mm. That's well, they, they lie to themselves, and you hear them a lot saying, "I earn more than a black cab driver, and I know more than a black cab driver." And really, what you're just doing is just trying to keep yourself confident that you're exactly. in the right position. Not when to really, do it. you're not. Yeah, you're yeah. talking yourself in. Yeah. not to do it. I don't want to do it. That's what you're saying, because really, every yeah. PHV driver that's ever done it, they why don't you're go not back. Do it. But Lenny, um, I'm naming blast from the past. Lenny Woodward. He said some good things to me years ago. They used to park up in Cornhill all the illegal Cortinas and whatever and back then, uh, picking up illegally. They weren't mini cabs. Clipboard jo- yeah. clip, clip yeah. Johnnies, they was called. And then he said to me, clubs. Dean, if it's that good, right, you all these cabbies moaning about, oh, they're all there nicking our fares, nicking our work. And it basically pointed out to me, Dean, you're one in, one out, aren't you? And we was in the 90s. It was one in, one out. So I couldn't be any busier. I couldn't do any more. Um, and he said to me, if it's that great, Get yourself a saloon car and go and do it. Yeah. If you, what, you, <laughs> what else are you going to do? You're yeah. saying that about them guys, they're saying they're moaning like that. That's another reason why they should be paying into one of the orgs, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. For all those things so that you, 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 you moan yeah. about there, who else is going to be our voice otherwise? Yeah, you can't moan and not go into it. No. If you, you moan and be in it, yes, you've got a right to moan, but not be in it. You must so be in it. The that say, oh, well, the game's dead. Well, you're still doing it then, mate. Yeah. Why are you wasting your time? I, I had that said to me when I was doing the knowledge all those years ago. Cab drivers put, nah, no good, mate. What? You don't want to do that. <laughs> when was it? 81, 80, 81? They were saying that to you then? I, 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 I've seen the old clip of a... It must be 1970s, that They're old saying clip. That, and they say that in that clip, don't they? Sorry, because my, my old grandfather used to work as a as a porter in the posh blocks of flats in Mayfair. So he had a lot of day-to-day t- contact with Cab drivers, obviously, hailing cabs. And when I told him I was going to be a cab driver, he turned around and said to me, give me that sign. He went, nah, he went, it's no good. Obviously, he had been brainwashed by hundreds of cab drivers who he talks to. Wasn't there, there was a golden era that some, was it around about the Thatcher era era when Canary Wharf was being, the Docklands, they invested, money was everywhere, maybe 80s. Big big Bang 85 was, the, the game was phenomenal. Everybody in the city would be, Work till one o'clock, out large in it. I had guys in the back of the cab late afternoon going into the West End playing spoofer who was going to pick up the rest of the day's bill. They termed them as Baraboy brokers, yeah. didn't they? And they was... Yeah, but do you, you see them anymore? No, like, no, the, you don't. What, ki- what killed that off was when it all went computerisation. They had the nows to do the dealing on their brains, but once it went over to computers... <laughs> That killed a lot of that off. That was bread and butter for us back in the 90s. Oh, yeah. God, you're not I would think they work from home as well, wouldn't they? That time? Maybe. Mm. But they were so big shots, jumping yeah. in. Right, they were going to restaurants, drinking champagne, jumping in and out, and they were having a right old time. And what, like, what they used to do to you as well, like, they used to have to buy, buy receipt books off you. Yes. Yeah. Your 50 pence receipt book. You thought you were a big time businessman selling them a receipt book for a, for a fiver. A 50, you'd pay 50 Fit. pence. You'd go, <laughs> Mate, four fifty. <laughs> He's doing about a grand. <laughs> they're Just sitting there writing out receipts <laughs> left, right, and centre to their box. So you still get asked for receipts now. A- occasionally, yeah, occasionally, occasionally. Yeah. But yeah. still get asked for them now. But when they do, straight away, I go sorry and press on that cab vision. You can press a cash receipt. At yes, the there you go. Yes, and so I fill it. Fill but it. Pete, you know they used out. to say they used to say, "Have you got any spare receipts?" Which yeah. is basically blagging it for yeah. they want it for nothing. Mm. And when you first knew, you do you think there's only pieces of paper, but they're going to commit fraud. Yeah, and no, I don't know no, if you're no, committing you, you, fraud you by are, giving them. No, you're, you're, no you only com- you, you'd only be liable if, the, if they said to you, "I'm going to commit yeah, yeah. fraud with this," because yeah, but if he was going to use it, write a phone number down. 
<laughs> You've got to know he's good. What he's, you know, to be a part of something. Well, you do know, but you. I mean, about that. In that case, you'd have a serial killer who buys a knife or something other than a shop that sold it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, true, true. You couldn't. No, the, be, the best one with that was that I always used to say to you, "I took a cab earlier on today, and I forgot yes. to get. A re- I forgot to get a receipt." Can you do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What people don't realise, I mean, you do the job over six quid or whatever. You give a blank receipt, even if fifty quid, you say, "Go use a mini cab in future." Yeah, 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 fifty quid. Mm. But he'll claim it back on expenses. I suppose you could go half each. I will write you a receipt for fifty quid, but the fair's twenty five. Okay, it says six on a thingy, but at least go half each. Mm. Well, I wouldn't do that either. I don't think they'd write it down. They're probably going to repeat. It. They've got to keep that figure down. When you bought that vehicle from yeah. me, was that your first cab? No, no, no. It's my third or fourth. So what was your first? First one. Well, the first one I rolled out on was brand new from Ascot's. Uh, a lovely brand new red one. It was two hundred pound a week to rent it. What year was that? I think it was an M plate. So it's I don't know what year that takes us to. I know S is no, S is seventy seven, and then we come around again with S. What was your S? Because there wasn't twenty six yeah. plates, was there? It went something like twenty two plates, and it would come back around to the beginning again. There was no vowels, was there? But you had a B, a C, a D. You didn't, didn't have, have an e. had an A in the early 80s. Yeah, I had, yeah, I had yeah. an A. Then what was the letters Would that they didn't have? 80, 83. Because we had they a Y would, in 82. Y had yeah, a, Y there was. There was eight, no O. I had an A. They didn't have an O, o plate. 83, yeah. No I. No, I. So, no I. So there was something about yeah. the vowels, but not quite the A, yes. They didn't Q. Have they didn't have a Q. Now we're going back. There was actually a Q. Yeah. Yeah. When they finished making the the FX4s, basically, and they went over to the... FX4 R's, everyone was so disgruntled with them. They, someone, Bright Spark, decided to re import engines from abroad. And the carriage office, in their infinite wisdom, they wouldn't license it as a new vehicle with a new registration. So it had the prefix Q. And so if you research Q cabs, it was a. So the plate was a Q, and it, you knew from that that yeah, it actually it, was it, not it, registered. It was like a, it was a new vehicle with a. An imported engine from somewhere else. A Q cab. Uh, hence, they was called Q cabs. But also, when you did the knowledge, what bike was it? A C ninety. Cub, Cub ninety. Was I it? bought my Cub ninety off a of Frankie Fox. Do you know Frankie Fox? I love Frankie Fox. I haven't seen him <laughs> since I bought the bike off him. <laughs> I, I, I actually bumped into him a fortnight ago. In did you? And I, the only time I ever bunk, bump into Frankie is round uh, Lincoln's in Fields, where he obviously where he lives. He sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. Had, Frankie is one of the true proper characters of the yep. cab trade. Ex Smithfield Market meat porter. Yeah. Built so like a brick. Frankie would have yeah. passed out the knowledge in 1994 because I would have bought a bike from him in 94 and I passed out in 96. Um, and that was it, yeah. The Cub 90 was a brilliant bike to do so it. So that's on. what the C stood for then? Yeah, Cub. Is it? Sorry, I never knew that. Yeah. So was there a 70? Is 50? Was there a 50? There no. was a 50. I had on the 50. It was no good though, was it? After two weeks of actually having it, I blew the inch. <laughs> no, that was almost S- impossible seriously. to do. No, no I didn't. I'm going to put a picture up uh, uh, on this of my, my Cub 90. I've got a picture of it. you got a picture of it? Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got a picture. It was a lovely bike. And uh, it just uh, went and went. How many miles did you put on it doing the knowledge? Uh, you know what? I don't, I don't think it worked. I don't think anything worked on it. Frankie Fox sold me a dud. Um, well, it, it was second hand when you bought it. It was old or Yeah, no, it was second hand. So he'd done the knowledge on it. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if, and we'll ask Frank, you can ask Frank for me, but he might have bought it off someone who'd done the knowledge on it. So bearing in mind when Pete done knowledge, it took a couple of weeks. So there might have been four people who had it before me because <laughs> the, knowledge, the knowledge actually got hard in the 90s. Back in the 80s, it was... Um, oh, everyone says it was hard when I'd done it. No, no, <laughs> I know, but when we had, the war. we had Silvio on, and Silvio said, you know, the, um, the the guys today, they just don't work hard enough. And I said, Silvio, how long did it take you? Oh, it took me 15 months. I said, when was it? Back in the 80, 82, 83, he'd done it. And how, how long did it take you? Oh, we'd done it in like, you know, four appearances, five appearances. And you think the guys today don't work hard enough is the reason it takes yeah. them so long. You'd have no idea. I had a bike, I had an Honda, yeah, but I've done uh, 1,100 miles, yes, 1,100 miles. Right? Dave, you, you And I've completed the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was, that's a bit of a lie, because I, I did, it was winter time, I did something in the car, I did section, I actually did, I don't know if I've ever told you this, I was doing it with a guy, and you actually know him, and you know him, Paul Winters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we was actually, we actually did a bit of work, we was working nights, and we was in the trucks, I did it, Bo, and uh, we had, we, one of the trucks we had to drive was a dust cart, and I, we, 
We just went but over weekends when we were working. We had to run the dust cart right out west part of the to Heath Row to, to empty. It's the only thing that was open twenty four hours a day. And we used to do some of the runs in the dust cart. So I do apologise for those people that we went down this street. So bring their with, with all the like lights flashing, all the lights yeah. banging and crashing, yeah. Board. And he would hold the ball and we could lift into, right <laughs> into. Uh, yeah, and we'd done a bit, yeah, some of the runs in the dust cart. That's rent. And I ne- hardly used the bike here. Yeah. Uh, and lots of the roads I knew from driving for all those years, yeah, so I didn't it. waste my time. This is something that we've been, we was pointing out with the PHV drivers. And mm. something I've pointed out many times, there is a problem with PHV drivers when they start to take knowledge. The problem is that they actually think they know something, and that complacency means that they're usually making a mistake. They're rubbish at it. They don't realise that it isn't a case. For example, you and me and you, if we had to do the knowledge again, we'd half struggle. We won't struggle driving a cab, and we won't struggle working our job because we're t- trained to do that. But passing the knowledge is a different skill because it involves sitting in a chair, speaking the words to a person, telling them how you get from A to B. So our skill isn't, we're not training to be taxi drivers at all. We're training to sit in chairs yeah. and tell people how we get from A to B. And the PHV drivers, they come thinking, well, I know London. Yeah, okay, you know London, but I bet you couldn't even take me from the Aldwych to Buckingham Palace. You couldn't do it. And most of them couldn't. They wouldn't get you to Parliament Square. They wouldn't get you to Victoria Station, for sure. They wouldn't know the, the little roads that are in between all the intricate stuff that we need to learn, and we can't make mistakes. So if you're not complacent, you, you've got a good chance, which you weren't. But you, you Dave, you were venomous. On the knowledge. Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's addictive, isn't it? It's yeah, addictive. Sort of, I think so. And I think this is why I try and get um, people to get engrossed. And it's difficult in the beginning. It takes it mm. does take a little bit of time to get your head around it. Now, like two or three months. But once you start in six months and a year, just surrender to it. And mm. I mean surrender in, in a nice way. I mean, you know, go go to the schools. Go to the schools. Pick up the books. Pick up as much as you, your brain can take. Take regular breaks, and you will find in a period of time you'll be able to do more. So, yeah. like in a being in a couple of hours around the map and everything else, you've got a bit of an headache. By the end of the knowledge, you can do 12 hours standing on your head. Yeah. In, in, yeah. But it, engrossing it and listen to the likes of Dean and, and listen to the examiners and listen to them and just surrender to it, yeah. and you'll go with the flow. You know, you'll get sucked in. Yeah. I'll- <laughs>